Hello everybody, and welcome to J Novel Club's industry panel for Cloud Matsuri 2020. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, we have a bunch of announcements we're going to make, and also some other uh, announcements about our company, so I hope everybody has a good time uh, and listens all about our light novels and manga. Uh, first off, uh, I want to give everybody, maybe some people who haven't heard of us yet, uh, a little in brief introduction to J Novel Club because we actually have time for this today, and I'd be happy to sort of explain to everyone what our company is and what we do. J Novel Club is a digital publishing company that was started by translators and fans like everyone here, uh, and we translate both light novels and manga straight from Japan. Uh, the other thing that makes us really sort of unique in the industry is that we have a subscription service which allows people to read the translations as we complete them. Every week, uh, when we finish a new chapter of manga or a new uh, part of one of our light novels, we will uh, publish it to our website and our app, and people can read them uh, if you have a membership, uh, which is only $4.50 a month for a yearly membership. And you get, you know, we have almost 30, 40 different series that we're translating at the same time, and you can read them all uh, with this membership every month. Of course, once we're finished translating the books, then we uh, fin finish them, we do you know, all the final polish on them, and we put them out as ebooks for sale on all your standard ebook stores Amazon, uh, Kobo, uh, Bookwalker, Google Play, basically any place you normally would buy ebooks, we sell uh, our books, and you can collect them that way, or you can have a membership, or you can do both. And over the past three years, we've actually published over 500 volumes now of light novels. Uh, we've really been trying to translate as much as possible. And we published a bunch of series you've probably heard of, like Ascendance of a Bookworm and Ari Furita and uh, other pretty big hits like that. So please check us out if you haven't heard of us. And we're going to talk about, uh, frankly, we're going to talk about a bunch of uh, e new licenses that we announced uh, just last week. And hopefully people are excited about those as well. Uh, a little bit more about J Novel Club. Uh, we also pr publish physical print volumes now. We started doing this about a year and a half ago, uh, and we've got a whole bunch of our series now in print. We've already published over 100 volumes uh, in print. Uh, I know it's five, still 500 digitally, but we've published uh, a lot of print books too. Some like Infinite Dendrogram. Uh, we're putting out Grace of the Gods, which is an anime that's airing right now. We put out uh, My Next Life is a Villainous, All Reads Routes Lead to Doom, uh, which had a successful anime that aired just a little while ago. Of course, uh, A Sentence of a Bookworm, um, and a bunch of other cool books like uh, An Archdemon's Dilemma and The Magic of This Other World is Too Far Behind. Uh, so please, if you're interested in print books, please check them out as well. Uh, okay, so without further ado, I'm going to get on with some new series announcement recaps. Here we go. Uh, the first one, and this is sort of our big announcement from the last, uh, the, our last announcements that we happened about a week ago, is The Apothecary Diaries by Natsuko, no, Natsuhyuga and the illustrations by Togo Shino. Uh, we already started streaming Volume 1 for members, and this is the basic summary. Mao Mao lives happily with her apothecary father until she's kidnapped and sold into service in the palace. Can she find a quiet life, or will her powers of deduction and insatiable curiosity bring her even more, ever more adventures and ever more dangers? Uh, this is a great and very big uh, light novel series in Japan. It sold millions and millions of copies in Japan, and it also has a couple, actually more than one successful manga adaptation, one of which is being published uh, just now by Square Enix Books. Uh, and it's a great sort of mystery, political drama, uh, uh, but with a sort of set in a pseudo-Chinese uh, imperial uh, uh, setting, and it's uh, really, really cool. And Mao Mao is one of the best female lead characters, I think, in all of uh, Japanese light novels. Um, so uh, please check it out if you can, if you're a streamer, or you can actually read the first part for free on our website, so uh, feel free to check that out even if you're not a member. Uh, and stay, up, be, stay on the lookout for the ebook uh, coming soon. All right, and then the next announcement we had was The Ideal Sponger Life by Tsunehiko Watanabe, and the illustrations are by Ju Ayakura. Uh, volume 1 streaming has also started for this one, and it has a successful manga which is being published by Seven Seas. Uh, this is the original light novel that the manga is based on. It's got a lot more detail. It's uh, it's really actually, despite the the premise uh, sounding kind of flimsy, it's got a lot of cool political the uh, political shenanigans and really great characters and powerful female um, empresses. Anyway, the uh, description is. When an office worker finds himself in a tropical world where dinosaurs roam, the last thing he expects is a marriage proposal from a beautiful queen. Her offer? A life of carefree luxury in exchange for an heir. But is everything really as it seems? <laughs> 
So of course this does seem to be like your ideal setup, but uh, nothing is ever as as easy as it as it turns out to be. So uh, this is a great long light novel series that uh, has you know very acclaimed, and I think a lot of people have were been hoping that this would be licensed for a long time, and we finally picked up the license. Now, uh, our next announcement that we had from uh, last week is a big title. My Friend's Little Sister Has It In For Me by Ghost Mikawa and illustrations by Tomari. Uh, teasing equals love. If you ask Akitero, that's all nonsense. Doesn't it make more sense to be nice? Unfortunately for Akitero, he, if he's right, it just means that every girl he interacts with is absolutely hates him. And if he's wrong... <laughs> so uh, this is a big up-and-coming rom-com from uh, uh, SoftBank Creative. Uh, it's got a successful manga. It's got tons of volumes in print. Uh, it's got this really cute main girl. <laughs> uh, it's one of those, you know, she teases me so much, but maybe she really likes me kind of uh, romances. And I think uh, it's also got a really big uh, game development subplot to it. So uh, if you like game, you know, game development as well as also like the standard uh light novel rom-com stuff this is a this is a really good series for you all right and then the ne next one we announced another rom-com is are you okay with a slightly older girlfriend by kota nozomi and the illustrations by merichi nanase uh, 15 year old momota kaoru falls in love at first sight when he meets a girl in a high school uniform on the train they start dating but it turns out that she's actually 27 can momota navigate the 12 year age gap and date a girl who captured his heart so uh, this is a you know kind of a light, fluffy uh, novel, but about with a with a I guess you could call it a reverse age gap if you want. Uh, it plays off a lot on the fact that like she likes video games that are from the SNES era. I guess I think it said it says cartridge, so maybe not maybe not that far back. But uh, and then he's you know he's into the latest games and and it plays off a lot of the, on the differences in that that aspect of the relationship. But of course uh, she's super cute and the and all the illustrations are uh, are really really nice and there's a little bit of definitely this is on the etchier side of rom-com so uh if people are like that sort of thing uh this is definitely the book for you it's got a bunch of volumes out in uh in in japan but it's it's actually a completed series so uh we'll be publishing it to its conclusion okay and then the next uh and last rom-com that we announced was this one she's the cutest but we're just friends by akamitsu awamura and the illustrations are by mu uh, high schooler Kai Nakamura gives all, his all to his otaku hobbies, and his best friend in the whole world is his super hot classmate Jun Miyakawa. Love is fleeting, but this friendship is forever in this just friends rom com filled with flirty fun. So this is definitely one of those um, like uh, uh, kind of it's kind of a teasing uh, style rom coms where it's like, well, will they or won't they? Or, you know, they're they're. They're having so much fun playing games together, but is it going to turn into something more? Maybe not. And it's uh, it's all got that kind of tension to it. So if you like those uh, if you like those styles of rom coms, this is definitely the one for you. It's got it's only got uh, two volumes out in Japan so far, but it's uh, it's got really good views, and everybody really likes it. I think it's one of the higher quality of this example of the genre. So hopefully people will check it out, and the illustrations are also really really cute. Hmm. Okay, now we also announced two manga, uh, both of which are adaptations of light novels that we've already published. Uh, the first one is Der Werewolf, The Annals of Vate Origins. Uh, the original novel is by Hyogetsu, and the adaptation is by Yuichi Kosumi. The, the basic uh, premise of Der Werewolf is that Vite was incarnated by as a werewolf mage and is now the vice commander of the Daemon Lord's Third Regiment. His task to capture and hold a remote commercial city causes him an endless hardships as he tries to keep the peace between human and demon kind. This is a really nice fantasy series. Uh, it's a little bit of a reincarnation isekai hook to it, but it's uh, much more about the the relationships between demons and humans and, and Vite being sort of overpowered in battle, but not really in terms of human-to-human -human, uh, relationships, or in this case, demon-to-human -human relationships. Uh, and it's got a great large cast of characters as well that is really fun. So uh, if you like the light novel and want to check out the manga, this is really a, a good example to do that. Or if you haven't checked out the light novel and maybe want to see whether it would be something you might be interested in, the manga could be a good place to start. We're, we're going to... Uh, uh, we've already started streaming of this one as well. Okay, next one. Welcome to Japan, Miss Elf. The manga version. Original novel by Makashima Suzuki and the adaptation is by Shimo Aono. 
Uh, Kazuhiro Kitase goes on many adventures in his dreams. When the elf girl he always explores with suddenly appears in the real world, Kazuhiro is thrust upon new adventures throughout Japan with the lovely Ms. Elf. So this is uh, definitely a series which is uh, a, what, what, an example of a reverse isekai, where the fantasy character comes to the real Japan, the real world in this case. Uh, and of course, it has, it's got a lot of focus on food, because if, if there's anything else you've learned from reading lots of reverse isekai, it's that fantasy elves love Japanese food. And there's no getting around it. And she is a perfect example of that. <laughs> uh, but the neat thing about this series is that it's not like they don't know each other. They've sort of been adventuring in the fantasy world for a long time together in, in his dreams. Uh, and it's just recently that she started coming back into the to Japan with him. And they also go on adventures in fantasy world during in the in the books as well. So it's sort of half uh, half fantasy, half reverse isekai, and it's a good mix of that. So. Uh, this is the manga adaptation. We are already up to volume, I think, five in the light novels, and six is coming out recently. Uh, so this is a nice series. It's very sweet. Uh, it's, the romance is is sort of there from the very beginning, and it just gets stronger and stronger. So uh, this is a series that really people people enjoy. Okay, and then we have two more series which we announced a little while ago, but we've started streaming them recently that you should really check out. The first one is The Great Cleric, White Collar Survival in Another World by Broccoli Lion, and the illustrations are by Sime. When a businessman's life is cut short, he finds himself thrust into a wild fantasy world, reborn as a 15-year-old boy. He resolves to live out a quiet, carefree life as a young healer, but does fate have other plans for him? Uh, this is a series that has a manga that's being published, I believe, by uh, Kodansha Comics, uh, and it is based off a... Of, well, it, it, the, this is the light novel that the manga is based off of, and it's a reincarnation isekai, when, uh, which is sort of a slow life, uh, not as much adventuring maybe as some of the other uh, fantasy bases as, as this one, because he just kind of wants to stay out of trouble. Uh, but it's got a large, good cast of characters and a slow burn, but very well uh, built world that uh, is surrounds the surrounds the world building here. So everybody should check this one out if you like this sort of story. Um, it's uh, one of the better examples out there. And then the other book that we licensed uh, recently, and we've just started streaming, The Magician Who Rose from Failure, Tales of War and Magic, by Gama Hitsuji, with illustrations by Saika Fushimi. Disowned at the age of six for his limited magic, Arcus Raytheft comes into a particular inheritance, memories of another life and another world altogether. Driven by a dead man's memories, Arcus resolves to surpass those who cast him aside. So this book is by the same author as the other Magic in this other world is too far behind, uh, and it's in a similar vein with lots of cool magic and theories and uh, adventure. Except this time it star stars a pair of twins, uh, and they're sort of being persecuted. And uh, uh, and but of course he discovers this new possibility for magic and ends up. Uh, uh, well, he doesn't start off particularly overpowered, but he slowly sort of. Uh, gains all these interesting new magical powers that uh, the other magicians in the world haven't really discovered yet. So this is a this is a cool brand new series from that author, which I hope people will enjoy. Okay, uh, next up we have a couple of other announcements. Um, so uh, one of them is uh, here we go. Uh, one of them is that our website is still being worked on and we're getting getting closer and closer for it to be uh, not just a beta anymore but a full-on website uh got a lot of new features it looks a lot better uh hopefully people will check it out you can check it out right now at beta.jnovel.club and uh if it were you know of course you can still use our, our original website but this one uh, I think at this point most of the bugs are done and actually now you can even subscribe uh, on the beta website so if you want to deal with your account or your subscriptions or any of those things feel free to use it. Uh, we can search through tags a lot easier and there's notifications. Uh, well, I'm sorry, there's you can follow series. We're working on the notification part. <laughs> That's not done yet. But uh, you can follow series and it'll tell you, it'll sh you can show just like the series that you follow, for example, when there are new parts out. So uh, there's lots of really good features like that. So please check out our new website and also our new app. Uh, beta is out now for both Android and iOS and it's got, uh, well, it basically works a whole lot better than our old app, <laughs> which barely works. Uh, and this one looks better and it's got a lot of uh, neat little features. Uh, you can now do things like margins and font size selection and 
Uh, and basically, it, uh, both horizontal and vertical reading are all finished now, so please check out our beta app as well, uh, both of which are sort of rushing, uh, hopefully to be uh, finalized by the end of the year. We'll see. Uh, it depends on how many more features we want to add and how many bugs we still have to squash. Uh, we're still working on that. And of course, if you do check out the betas and you find something that uh, you think is wrong, make sure you post it on our forums uh, since we have uh, a lot of feedback that we're getting from you guys about both of those. All right, and that's it for our panel for the day. Uh, now, uh, we are, this, is pre, this part is pre-recorded, but uh, we are going to be around for some live question and answer sessions, so uh, feel free to ask any questions. Now's the time. I'm not sure exactly how this is going to work, but we'll, we'll figure it out somehow. So <laughs> thanks, everybody, for coming, and I hope uh, you check out all these cool new light novels that we've announced uh, whenever we've started streaming them. Most of them we've already started, actually. Uh, and of course, we have all of our other late novels that we, we publish here at J Novel Club. So check out our whole catalog. Uh, there's definitely something for everyone to enjoy. So thanks a lot for everybody. And I will see you at our next uh, panel. So there we go, guys. Lots of announcements, lots of cool stuff to look forward to there. And um, I'm very pleased that we're joined by not one, but two members of J Novel Club, uh, starting with the founder and owner, uh, Samuel Panansky. How are you doing, Sam? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you very much, everybody at uh, All the Anime, for this uh, really cool event that you're putting on this weekend. Mm, excellent. And also joining us for this Q and A session is John Collis, the manga and print manager for J Novel Club. How, how are you doing over there, John? Uh, not bad. Excellent. Good stuff. So I can see questions coming in already. Um, you can drop us your questions in the YouTube chat, or you can also send them to us on Twitter um, using the uh, Cloud Mansory hashtag. So before we get into to some of the questions coming in, like one of the things that, that struck me from that, that uh, presentation that, that you just gave is that you've hit 500 volumes that you've released. Like, I mean, Sam, how does it feel to have, have reached that landmark? Because it feels like only yesterday that kind of J Novel Club was launching to me. Well, I mean, it feels like it hasn't been very long for me too, uh, uh, even from just starting the company. But uh, part of the philosophy of J Novel Club from the very beginning has always been to just produce the content that the fans want. And the fact that we've uh, managed to publish over 500 volumes of light novels just means that you guys really want light novels. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and we're happy to, to, to translate them and, and publish them as, as, uh, as long as you keep uh, buying them. Uh, and I think also the adaptation, the adoption of, of uh, eBooks uh, more and more, especially for the light novel uh, side of things uh, uh, has really helped us be able to push out more content. Uh, but we've started, we've already published over a hundred physical books too. And that just started a year, about a year and a half ago. So um, uh, yeah, no, we really, we work hard to produce as much content as possible. Mm, yeah, and you, you certainly seem to be doing that. I mean, that, that was gonna be my, my next question. You know, obviously you, you produce all these print volumes was that always part of the plan to kind of move from just digital stuff to print as well? Or did that kind of come about as a result of, of you know, fan feedback? Um, well, as a fan myself, I mean, I, I am, uh, uh, I'm old enough to be, you know, to understand the feelings of people who, who think that if it's not a physical thing that you hold in your hands, then it doesn't have, you know, real worth, right? But also I, but I'm young enough to also know that, that some, that people just want to be able to consume things in the most easiest and convenient way possible. And so uh, I have an e-reader and I love to read digital eBooks on it. It's so convenient and easy, but then I also love to have books on my bookshelf. So I can, I can feel at things from both sides of the perspective. And in terms of business strategy, when you're starting a business from scratch with no investors like, like I had or, or no track record from a publishing standpoint, uh, you, you really, it's impossible to just right out the gate, just decide to publish books and distribute them in America, uh, especially in the US side. Uh, it's, you know, it's a very big country. You have to have, be able to, to partner with you know, big distributors. Uh, and it's very difficult to get off the ground on print from, from the start without a large amounts of investment or on the contrary, just very small amounts of content. And rather than uh, do one or two volumes in the first year, print and digital, I opted to do 25 volumes in the first year digital, right? Mm -hmm. Or actually the first couple months. And, and it, once the company became viable fairly quickly and profitable, I started fairly early to, to work up uh, how to start integrating print and print books into the company. And it was a long process. It took almost a year and a half 
to find a distributor, find a manufacturer, uh, come up with the workflows. It was a very deliberate process that I did behind the scenes before we started putting out our first books. When, I, when we released our first print books in, uh, I believe it was February of 2019, we had five releases that month or four releases that month. So uh, when we started, we started right out the gate and we and it started with a full full distribution you know nation wide and and now we've uh, we now have a uh, complete native distribution in the uk uh through ingram who uh bought perseus books a while ago and and they have their own distribution warehouse and their own sales team in the uk so uh, at least in especially for for your market in, in the uk we have really a solid distribution and i mean on the print side as well and maybe this is more of a question for john you know you started doing some kind of you know some pretty nice additions, some omnibuses, things like that. You know, how how has that kind of thing, you know, gone down with with fans? Have they been really kind of ravenous for for that kind of, of physical product? Yeah, um, I mean the the hardbacks that we do for the classic series like Full Metal Panic, um, for Slayers that's coming up next year, for Crest of the Stars, um, these are definitely titles that appeal to people who like having that collection, and who like having the nice hardback. It looks good in the bookstore. It looks good on the shelf. Um, we're starting to do more two-in-ones of the regular light novels, mm -hmm. and we're really looking forward to seeing the response on those. Um, our marketing person is the only one who actually has the physical books in her hands right now. Uh, um, and, but, you know, you're seeing some of the pictures come up on Twitter, and they look really nice. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also nice because for some of these series, it's a really good price point. You know, it's about, I think it's 16 quid. I'm assuming that everybody watching this is in the UK. It's about 16 pounds, I think, for like a 350-page manga, which is not a bad deal. So, you know, it helps us get things out a little faster. It helps us to streamline some of the work process. You know, but we're putting out about seven books in physical at any given time, um, in addition to Rokodrama. <laughs> which, which 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 has been the last fourteen months of a lot of people's lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's a big Kickstarter that we did about a year ago, and uh, we're we're finishing up the production now. It's going to be out getting out to people pretty soon. The 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 print the proofs are in. The checks are final checks are being done. It's it's a it's a great project. We're happy to have done it, but John will be happy to be done with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think we 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 all know we all know that feeling well. Um, so I mean. It, it's a kind of interesting point, you know, do you see any kind of big differences in sort of the popularity of titles between digital and physical, or does it actually map across pretty well that something that everybody is reading digitally, you know, the, the sales kind of match in terms of physical, or is, is there kind of, you know, a bit of a difference in the audience there? Oh, there's, there's definitely a, a sliding scale. Uh, I think we can, we can sort of uh, I wouldn't want to group consumers, but we can we can measure a consumer uh, sort of on two different axes, like how much they want to collect something and how much they want to consume something. And some people are both consumers and collectors. Some people are just collectors. Some people are just consumers, right? And the titles that are the highest on the collection scale are the ones that do best on print, and especially those special editions, those hardcovers, those uh, that we do. Uh, but the, the on the consumption side, those titles are really probably do best in uh, in digital, uh, and we definitely see a large. Our digital sales of light novels are significantly higher than our physical sales of light novels. Still, um, on the other hand, on the manga side, uh, we well we don't have full data yet on this, but we know from other companies as well that the digital sales of manga still lag behind the physical sales of manga by quite a bit. So there is a there's a difference in the in the medium uh, in, between light novels and manga, and there's also a difference in the titles themselves. Uh, for example, Crest of the Stars, uh, Banner of the Stars, those are books that people really want to buy and own and collect because uh, they're fans of the classic anime, or, and maybe they read the old Tokyo Pop editions before those got canceled, right? Uh, but people really want to own these books, and that's why we find that the physical sales of those uh, collector's editions are very strong. Uh, whereas the digital sales of the ebooks are not are not real and something to write home about, I guess would be the phrase I would put it. Um, and the same to the same extent uh, is true for Full Metal Panic, uh, and we've even seen we're, we're seeing the same pattern with Slayers. Uh, but that's precisely why we're putting them out in these 
fancy collector's editions because we know that's what the those are that's the type of thing that the consumer wants wants for those series. On the other hand, for long running uh, web novel uh, originally web novel uh, isekai uh, uh, sort of um, fluffier series or lighter series, uh, we know how people want to consume those, which is every week. You know, as we with our subscription service, you can read the new chapter every week in our website. People are discussing it. Um, and then you have series which combine both, like, say, Ascendance of a Bookworm, where there are people that definitely want to consume these series online or as ebooks as soon as they are released. And then there are totally people who are going to buy every single volume and, and at, buy an entire bookshelf just for this series, <laughs> um, who are going to buy every volume. So uh, we try and judge series by series sort of what the consumer um, uh, need is and, and provide it. And sometimes that changes, right? We we look at a series and, and we look at the fans and there's so many people that are reading it as ebooks and but then also want to own the books and maybe we'll print that series um, or vice versa. So uh, it's a it's an interesting balance, that's true. But when you have three different business models, you have to you have to sort of figure out where the where that balance is. Of course. And I mean I, I guess it's also sort of worth mentioning that, you know, you you've talked and, and touched a little on, on the manga side of things, re releasing, you know, some manga titles. What Again, was was it always part of the plan to kind of branch out into that? And kind of what what led to that decision to you know move away from simply light novels into to that sphere as well? Um, I would say that there there are two big factors for that. One is that there is a wealth of manga adaptations of light novels that we're not really getting licensed, and where we already had the rights to the light novel version. And uh, I looked at those as both manga that people want to read themselves, but also as great advertising for the light novels originally, which is the same, which is the same uh, thing that they serve in Japan uh, as well. The manga adaptations of light novels are often sort of considered as not necessarily trying to sell uh, books themselves, but to just give overall popularity to the franchise and maybe help increase the possibility of it getting an anime adaptation, those sorts of things. Yeah. Um, so that's one reason. Uh, the other reason is that, uh, from a licensing perspective, um, it's very good as a as a company to be able to also be able to publish manga and to prove that you have the ability to do that on that side of things. Because most publishers in Japan don't just publish light novels; they publish manga, uh, and and it's uh, and it's better to be a well more well rounded company like that. So, in addition to us being able to publish physical books, uh, now we are also publishing manga, and that is sort of the last. Uh, piece of the well-rounded English language uh, anime manga genre publishing company bit that we had to put into the company. So, uh, so for the past you know six months to a year, uh, we've licensed a lot of tie-in store light novels. We licensed a couple of the original series like uh, Animeta, Marginal Operation, which are both really great, um, and. We're sort of looking at uh, licensing more original series, maybe which some genre to focus on. Uh, those are all things for future plans that we could definitely take this good base, this good workflow that we've that we've developed uh, internally and uh, put put out a lot more manga than we currently are doing. So uh, those are the kinds of things that we're we're thinking about. But it's all sort of gradual steps to develop the workflow, develop the talent, the letters, the translators, the editors. Uh, how to actually, you know, lay out the manga books to be professional. Um, we, you know, we developed that over many months, and uh, now I think we're we're producing some of the highest quality manga out on the market. So, um, uh, I think it's good that we uh, that we took our our time doing that. It's it's been a long process, um, mm -hmm. and every you know we're still making steps to improve and to get better, and you know to really make it great for the reader and great for the people who work on it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So I'm going to go switch to, to a question from the, the chat now here, from the, the YouTube chat from GG. And I think if you have that Iseko and your bingo card, you may want to cross it off here. Uh, what J Novel Club releases or types of novel have been particularly popular for you guys? Mm. Isekai. Isekai. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, those are our Isekai fantasy. Um, uh, and uh, I guess you could say stories where a main character is sort of out of his element but uses a special power or some kind of thing to 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 be successful uh, whether that those are those are definitely the the biggest selling i, I wouldn't just say their wish fulfillment they're gonna be very exciting to be very 
you know, very dark in some places, but there's always that sense of catharsis, uh, catharsis, which, um, which, which people really enjoy right now. And I think uh, 2020 has been a, a even more so an example of a year when, when people could r really uh, uh, just want to, when they're sitting down and reading a book, they they don't want to be reminded about the world, the actual world around them. They want to they want to travel to a different world. And uh, and, this, and our books really enable people to do that. And I think a lot of people have, uh, have really enjoyed the worlds that we're publishing. So that's the biggest seller. Um, but we've also seen really good growth in Jane of a Heart, uh, our, our line for uh, more female readers, um, both from female audience, but also from male audience who are reading these really great books too. Um, you know, My Next Life as a Villainess, I think, has cross-gender appeal to many people. It's a great, it's a great hilarious show, where, no matter who you are. Um, and, and then other books that we're publishing, like Pure Moon Empire, which is definitely, um, you know, uh, uh, supposed to be towards female readers, but uh, it's something that is super universal that everybody likes. Um, uh, I don't know, a lot of our titles, I think, are, are getting just really good sales and uh, are doing better than we expected. Now, they're still not selling like the isekai, but, you know, come on. <laughs> can't have everything right uh so but but we're on as you noticed from our licensing announcements uh panel earlier uh we're pushing into some more rom-coms some more slice of life uh uh titles and we're, we're going to see how those do in the future and i have a lot of high expectations people's tastes always sort of shift gradually over time so you have to you have to try and ride the wave as long as you can you know, wherever it goes the core of a lot of this too is escapism Mm -hmm. um, it is getting away, whether that's, you know, your goofy idealized school life or the isekai and the fantasy or the dad fiction of marginal operation. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you something to get away from. Mm -hmm. And that's true of romance novels as well. It's the same reason people read mysteries, why they read romance, why they read fantasy or crime or whatever. It, it lets you get away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the form the format of light novels and also manga uh, of being long serialized stories of over many volumes just in and of itself compared to more Western um, uh, uh, media, I think lends itself to that because you have so much more time to develop a world, um, even if it's similar to, even if it's based on the real world, to develop all the characters and all the little situations in the town or, or the school. Uh, uh, and so giving all that time and space to to allow people to really get into that that fantasy or the, that uh, reality within the book is why I think uh, is super attractive to this media compared to uh, yeah. other media out there these days. Yeah, think of every time you watch an anime or read a manga and you go, I just like spending time with these characters. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and our books are really, really like that. So I think that's, that's the most important factor. Mm. And I mean, you mentioned kind of, you know, sort of riding the wave of, you know, sort of the, the trends and what people are into. Are, are you seeing or kind of getting any feel for kind of what the next sort of big genre is going to be after Isekai? Or is that still just the 400 pound gorilla that is kind of trampling over everything else? I mean, it's never well, going to go away. I mean, uh, Sword, when Sword Out Online came out, I mean, everybody said, oh, it's, uh, you know, well, what's going to be the next big genre after VR MMO? And it ended up being isekai, which isn't really any different when you think about it. <laughs> so, what I think the real question is how are how is isekai going to be rebranded in the future to so that people will pretend it's a different genre, but it's really the same genre that we've always enjoyed for like about tw two decades. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we we had a, we had a really interesting discussion one time on the Discord, or was, it was Slack, it was somewhere, and we were trying to figure out what the earliest qualification for an isekai was, and I think. I think we came down to Wizard of Oz. Well, well yeah. what about, no, I thought it was King Arthur, uh, the, a Yankee in King Arthur. Oh yeah, it was. It was. It was a Yankee in King Arthur's court. That's the. That's the. That's the academically accepted original isekai. But I don't know. I, I think Job might might count. Uh, somewhere. Or Gulliver. Gulliver's Travels. Gull Gulliver is that before uh, King Arthur? Yeah, I think it was before. Yeah, that was King the seventh. That was. And some people have said Urashiyama. What's the word? Taro Urashiyama. The, the guy who the guy who wrote a turtle down to the sea and then came back like a hundred years later in the Japanese folklore, um, uh, that story might even predate. I don't know if it actually predates like King Arthur's court. I think it's sort of contemporary. It just seems like it does because of you know difference in society. <laughs> it, 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 it's a wish fulfillment. You know, it's a wish yeah. everybody always has. 
yeah so no it's very interesting so in terms of the, the trends though there are there are a lot of close there are lots the trends actually that i'm looking for right now and maybe i don't want to say what the what i think the trends is but i'm what i'm looking at to help predict the trends is not so much it, it two things the content that's being pushed in japan at now because uh, because the content that's getting pushed in japan now is going to get anime adaptations in two years and and that's sort of when we need to we need to start looking at what to license now for those um and then secondly the demographic changes within the Amer our audience in, in in the west um and well and around the world but uh, our audience in the english-speaking world where uh, we look at sort of uh, the gender balance, we look at the uh, we look at um, uh, the age uh, uh, you know, curve. We have some data about who's actually reading our books, or some data about our subscribers, and we look at that and we see how that changes over time, and and that can also really provide a good clue as to where the audience is going. Right. I think if you're as an anime distributor, um, uh, you, you, I'm sure you you do the same sort of thinking, um, and and for you, it's maybe even harder because you have to deal with the three or four year time period that it takes to make an anime when the, from the beginning of a, of, a, uh, of a production committee to when it actually comes out, right? Whereas we, at least when the, you know, an author, a book is being published in Japan, we at least have a little bit of time to evaluate it. <laughs> <Yeah. Still. laughs> exactly. So, I mean, uh, kind of a, a away from that kind of thing, it, are, are there any kind of, hidden gems in your catalog, you, titles that you feel are underappreciated that you personally have a lot of love for that you kind of want to get out there and tell everybody to read right now? Well, I think I'll let John go first on this. I know you got a bunch. Uh, Discommunication, definitely, uh, which mm -hmm. is the first big work from the guy who did Mysterious Girlfriend X. Ah. Um, it's beautiful, beautiful manga, um, and the team who work on it have just bent over backwards to make that series as gorgeous as they can. Because uh, mm -hmm. you have to remember, this was done in the 90s before things like layered digital art. And just the extent they go through for that book is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I really like Animeta and Marginal Operation. Um, but I'm perhaps a bit older than a lot of the people watching this. Uh, Animeta is a very... I don't want to say it's like no holds barred, but it's a very honest look at working in anime from somebody who got their start working in anime. Um, marginal operation, it's dad fiction. And so I like that because that's, you know, I'm old. Um, you know, I mean, I love our sci-fi, our retro titles. And yeah, just, you know, we, we really try not to put out anything bad, but mm -hmm. de there's definitely stuff where you go, ooh, I wish a few more people were looking at that. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to recommend two books, one purely out of uh, self-interest and the other, because I really, I really think people should look at it, but uh, you should totally go and read Kokoro Connect. So we actually just released the final uh, volume, I think volume 11 of that series. It's, it was a, it's a completed series in Japan. It had an anime adaptation uh, a while ago, which was had some controversy about the anime adaptation, but the original books are were award-winning and amazing. Uh, it's it's science fiction, but it's mostly uh, interpersonal school drama relationships, relationships and twists and turns. And uh, uh, the, the the basic premise uh, is that a bunch of school kids are in a club, and some sort of extraterrestrial or or strange entity starts messing with them. And does weird things to their memories or their personalities or their body swaps. And every every volume basically there's some hard, you know, strange thing that happens to them from the sky, and they have to overcome it somehow uh, by sort of coming together or or breaking apart or some combination of the two. Um, and it's an amazing series, and we had a great translator translation team on it, and they've been working on it for like almost two years now. And it really just hasn't gotten the the, the readership that it really deserves. So everybody go check out Kokoro Connect. And then lastly, I'm going to put in a plug for the, the one and only book at J Novel Club that I translate myself, uh, which is My Little Sister Can Read Kanji, which I'm sure you've never heard of, but that's okay. Uh, I, I, I procrastinated slash was busy building a successful publishing company for like two years. And so volume five had, like, had a bit of a gap there, but uh, 
we are fin we're finally finishing the series up with volume five. It's almost fully translated now. Um, there's like one more part left and it'll be out uh, in January. Uh, and so everybody who, anybody who want, who, who thinks that the whole like little sister fetish thing is kind of weird and creepy, um, or anybody who thinks that the whole little sister fetish thing is the best thing ever, you have to read this book because it's both, uh, it both puts up on a pedestal and smashes that same pedestal to bits with a sledge, sledgehammer through, through um, a parody, uh, uh, the, the whole concept of, of light novels and Little Sister Light novels, and you really have to read it, and it's brilliant. But not just because I translated myself. Yeah, Sam, <laughs> when Sam brought up Kokoro Connect and Body Swaps, um, oh, yeah. what a series that I didn't have the highest hopes for that has turned out to be just an absolute joy to read is I Love Yuri and I Got Body Swapped with Big Joshi. <laughs> uh, the first mm -hmm. ebook of that is coming out at the start of December. Uh, you can read it now if you're a subscriber on the site. Mm -hmm. And it's what it says on the tin and you know you think about that and it's like oh this is going to be you know dumb otaku humor and no it is like just the right amount of like crude you know lowbrow laugh out loud jokes and if you like really dumb anime humor and i love dumb anime humor like it's so good um <laughs> yeah, so so good it's really funny Plenty of, of recommendations there, and yeah, uh, the worst thing about hosting this panel right now is you've just given me a list of titles that I've started reading and I need to catch up on, so uh, yeah, I'm well, going to need to get back to some of those. Well, don't forget, you know, it, it's almost the end of the month, so we'll be doing a whole new 30 books to catch up in a week. <laughs> Fantastic. Good, good job we have so much free time. Um, so yeah. I guess... I should probably start moving on to some of the questions we're getting into chat because it wouldn't be an industry panel without lots of people asking, can you license insert title here? Mm -hmm. um, and one title that's already been been mentioned in another form, um, but Tag It 250 in the chat asks, uh, do you have any thoughts about uh, considering the marginal operation novel? Um, yes, uh, uh, obviously the manga for the marginal operation is an adaptation of original novel series. Um, we decided to go with the manga first on uh, this one, which is something, and not the, the novel, uh, for two reasons. One is licensing reason, the other is um, market re market reason. Um, but the, these are those are not actually light novels; those are just novels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and because of that, they're published by a division in Kodansha that we didn't have a pre-existing relationship with. So uh, it would have been difficult to go through the 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 the. The, the procedures for licensing normal novels versus light novels is a little bit different in Japan. They're used to going through agents and things. Uh, but now I believe, it, so that's why we, we were able to access the manga first um, uh, before we go to novels. And, and that's why we licensed that first like that. Secondly, um, even in Japan, the manga sells way more than the novels and the manga is much more critically acclaimed in this particular case. Uh, the manga is, is, is very successful and ongoing. And so um, it's the, it's actually, even in Japan, it's thought as like the, the, the best way to read that particular work. The, it's very different than the novels. It's not just a straight adaptation. Uh, and so we would definitely consider the novels in the future at some point, but right now it's not, it's not on, our, on, our, on our palette. And, and I can still tell people like, in this case, you can, you can consider the manga its own work. You don't have to read it like always thinking in the back of your mind, oh, what am I missing? Because you're not really missing anything. It's a complete and it, it's very much its own, its own work. Uh, with its own uh, uh, pedigree. Hmm. Uh, and next question from the chat is from Tez Takes on White Novels, who asks, mm -hmm. uh, I'm just curious if you may try to get more GA Bunko stuff and more from the authors we saw in the last announcement event. I quite like those publishers and authors, they say. Uh, well, that's a very simple answer. If, if, you, if people buy the three that we just announced licenses for, then heck yeah, we're gonna get more books like that. I mean, sure. Uh, no, once we, once, although the more or less flippant answer is, once we have an existing relationship with a publisher like G.A. Bunko, uh, licensing and offering for more titles within the same editorial line is a lot easier and hopefully be a lot faster. The master contract is done. We just have to, you know, I, it's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot less paperwork involved, a lot less lawyers that get in the way. So it, it definitely is easier to do it in the future. But how much we'll do it in the future really depends on how things go with these three titles. Yeah, there's a saying in the business, everybody wants to be the second one to do the deal. <laughs> and everybody wants to do the second um, agreement. That's, uh, that so. makes 
that makes sense. So uh, next question is from Mark Gaste, who asks, uh, can you guys please license Gate, thus the JS JSDF for their novel series? Mm. Didn't somebody get that? That was the manga. It was Sekai Project. They never released volume two. It was a giant. Uh, uh, I don't, <laughs> don't want to complain about other people, other companies. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but no, no one has licensed the novels. Um, uh, that is published by a publisher that we do not have a, a, any relationship with called Alpha Police. Um, and uh, for reasons I won't get into, I think it's not so likely that we would license books from that particular publisher in Japan. So I would, I, I, don't, I mean, I, it's weird for, for, for people to actually comment on speculative licensing, but in the case of Gate um, and, and any books being published by Alpha Police, um, uh, I would say don't hold your breath. I, it's not it's not a complete zero percent chance, but there are various reasons that I don't want to get into why um, uh, why the licensing from book from them is maybe not our first choice. Hmm. Fair enough. Uh, so next question, and I, I think I saw a few other people mentioning it, but uh, Joshua Watts is the first one that I picked out here. Uh, what are your thoughts about possibly rescuing Shakigan no Shanna? Shanna. Hmm. Here's the problem with Shanna, and also, and also Zero Notes Kaima. Well, we might as well lump those two, two together. Uh, <laughs> um, so we have licensed rescued some titles from Tokyo Pop, Crescent Stars, Full Metal Panic, um, uh, now Slayers, right? Um, and I remember I always said there were like the two, the two meters of like how many people want to read the books versus how many people want to collect them, right? Um, with both Shanna and uh, say Zero Nuts Kaima, the number of people actually want would want to collect the well. I like um, I believe both of them are twenty volumes or more in length, um, and the number of people who would want to collect them or who would buy the ebook releases uh, of them are are not enough to justify the the cost for for rescuing those two. The fandom hasn't survived in a strong enough fashion to 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 make it happen. And the fact that in both those cases, there hasn't been any new material for either of those, either of those franchises at all. There's no new anime adaptations, there's no new manga. Like with Full Metal Panic, um, like it, there, there's always been a strong undercurrent. There's always new anime coming. There's not always, but well, there's you know, relatively recent um, anime adaptations. Uh, Crest of the Stars, Banner of the Stars, a new novel came out. You know, they might make another OBA of that and then we'll see <laughs> if that ever happens. Um, uh, and uh, and Slayers, I mean, their Slayers is, is perennial, right? In, in many cases, that's what it, that, the difference in, in popularity is is quite obvious there. So I I don't see those titles being a reasonable rescue because we'd have to do them digital only, and digital only does not sell enough to, to cover the translation cost. So um, I wouldn't get your hopes up for those particular in, in particular unless, and I'll say the same. Unless there is some kind of big anniversary project in Japan where they make some new something for those series that we could tie into, and then maybe it would be a worthwhile um, uh, thing to to pursue. But for now, I would say those that level of rescue is 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 tricky. Now, to 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 give some people some hope, then then you have other uh, another category like Gothic, for example, another Tokyo Pop rescue, but that's only like five volumes, so they're I could justify the cost maybe of putting out a nice <laughs> print version of that. Like, like there's a big difference between a 30 volume series and a five volume series in terms of the upfront cost and the risk and 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 the the size of the audience and how we can market it, right? So, uh, I but I but I'm happy to give specific answers on on, on Shana and I don't see Shana as viable. Yeah, get get a nice crossover video game. You know, one of the things that kept Full Metal Panic going for so many years was Super Robot mm -hmm. Wars. And that's part of why a lot of you're seeing this revival of old robot shows mm -hmm. in anime is because of Super Robot Wars. So does does so, a, does a, a... get Super Isekai Wars going and <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, cool. Well, I mean, I, I guess we, we've also had a, a question from that man in his manga about uh, whether you have any interest in other Tokyo Pop license rescues. Obviously, you're not going to spout out a bunch of specific titles at this point, but are, are, are there others in a general sense that you're all kind of looking at from the Tokyo Pop stable? 
Um, I, we, whether or not it actually had a Tokyo pop release is not as important as as the just the overall popularity of the of the of the series. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I think if it if it had a Tokyo pop release back in the day, then then there's or not just Tokyo pop, but there's also you know, uh, for example, Seven Seas put out a lot of light novels back in the day. Uh, what was it Strawberry Panic and things like that, which are also uh, ended up getting canceled after the after Borders went bankrupt. Um, th there was a there was quite a number of th of victims from that era, which it would be nice if someone eventually picked up and, and published. But in all these cases, they have to be retranslated from scratch. You can't just start from where they left off. Um, and because they were all originally print books, like if you don't do them in print at all, then people will be dissatisfied. So mm -hmm. um, uh, it's a careful consideration we have to make. And and we're and even in the rescues we've done so far, Photo Model Panic and uh, and and, uh, and Crest of the Stars, they've been you know they've they've made a little bit of money for us, but they haven't blown anyone's socks off. So we also have capacity there. We we can't be putting out a ton of these nice you know hardcover omnibuses every year, or John will will, will murder me. So. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, they're a little bit harder to produce than our other print books, and so we also have, just have capacity concerns. We, we can't be doing all these license rescues that barely sell anything when we can be, you know, putting out more ascendance of a bookworm faster, which is what really sells, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not against them in principle, but I don't have anything currently that I, that says I really want to get there. That's fair. And, and also, having mentioned Slayers, like, uh, again, don't know how much you want to share on this, but how was, how was Slayers performed so far? Is it, has it done okay for you guys? It's about on par with what Full Metal's doing in digital. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, we're thrilled to have it. The critical response has been amazing. Mm -hmm. um, the, review, the reviews are great. Um, the actual people who are actually reading it are not as many as, um, are not as many as the, as the noise that people make on Twitter. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but we uh, we kind of expected that that's going to be one that the print buyers will really mm -hmm. go for. You know, it's it's really hard to get somebody who's currently fifteen or sixteen to read Slayers because it's not the hot new thing. Yeah. But people who got into anime in the '90s and in the early 2000s, when they go to the bookstore, if bookstores ever reopen. Um, you know, they'll see that on the shelf and be like, oh, I remember that. And they'll see the nice new cover and they'll be more likely to pick it up. You know, there's a real nostalgia for Slayers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the, the, we'll, we'll be frank. The, the, the sales of the ebook sales for Slayers are, are, uh, are yeah. not going to cover the translation costs. But, but the, hopefully the, uh, the print editions will, will make it worth a while uh, when, we, when we come out with the nice omnibus uh, uh, stream ones. Uh, coming uh, next summer. Yeah, cool. Okay. We're actually we'll getting to. Yeah, so we're getting um, ready to start production on that too. So yep. ah, <laughs> good, good stuff. So I think uh, I'll just drop you one last question before we start to close down. Um, this one comes from Yowie Overlord, who perhaps predictably asks, um, "Any hmm. plans on the possibility of releasing any BL light novels?" Hmm. So we get this question uh, once a panel, it seems. Um, uh, but that's that I was expecting. Uh, and I usually get the same, and I get the same answer here, which is that um, because a lot, because our website and our business model work, works off of a subscription service where people can read um, uh, things week to week on a subscription. Um, uh, if we were to license BL novels, especially most of them, I would say I would, this is not true, but a majority of them uh, that I think are fairly are fairly explicit, and uh, and they would they would be dangerous for us to have on a subscription service because of our credit card provider, right? Um, uh, and so from a strategy uh, perspective, you can do a couple of things there where you could just do them as eBooks, for example, which is definitely possible. Um, or we could even, you know, try and do some as print if they, if they get popular enough to warrant that. Um, but rather than that, I, I feel like it would be more worthwhile for us to work with an established um, BL uh, uh, publisher, digital publisher, like I've um, met and talked with the Kitekia uh, a couple of times about these sorts of possibilities where um, J novel could help translate and localize and license some of the, the light novels, the BL light novels, but then uh, they could stream it on their service and maybe we could, we could sell the, the ebooks. Um, so it's something where I wouldn't integrate it directly, like just lump it in with all the rest of the books at the same time, 
also because I don't think BL uh, uh, has as much crossover appeal to the to the male audience. So you know, I think that's maybe borne out at this point. It has a strong, obviously, female audience, which is why it is so popular. But um, uh, but yeah, I think it'd be fine to sort of uh, separate it and include either a separate label or even putting it on different services um, that are more appropriate for it to be sold. So uh, it's something that definitely we've considered. The other issue about BL um, light novels is that, uh, well, um, well, we haven't actually licensed any of them yet, and the licensing the, those are usually published by different editorial departments than the ones we currently have licenses for. So, we, if I was going to do it like I, you know, like anything, it would be a concerted effort. I don't want to just dabble in one just to see what happens. I would want to, you know, come up with a line, do four or five, six titles like we did with Jane on the Heart. Um, uh, uh, however, if we did do BL novels, I've already decided that it would be under J Novel Spade. Superb. So I think that's uh, pretty much all we have time for. So we'll, we'll, we, will, we will wrap things up here. Um, Sam Panansky and John Collis, thank you ever so much for, for taking the time to, to talk to us today. Um, I will let you close off by just letting people know where they can find J Novel Club and find out more information about you guys. Oh, right. Um, so, of course, J Novel Club, you can find out all about us by going to jnovelclub.com. No, no, not .com, just jnovel.club. It's a j-novel, N-O-V-E-L, dot C-L-U-B. Uh, and that's our webpage, and uh, you can go to the About Us or How It Works or check out, check out our titles. Um, of course, all of our ebooks are sale, for sale on every ebook store out, uh, under the sun, so Bookwalker, Nook, Google Play, Apple, uh, uh, Overdrive for libraries in the in the West. Um, we're even starting to be available some of our series on some uh, European places like, uh, uh, well, I don't know. We, we're working on we're working on some European ebook store releases as well. Um, but yeah, check those out for all of our titles. Um, and yeah, you can even buy our stuff on Amazon if you really want to. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's where you can find Jay Novel Club, and uh, hopefully everybody checks us out. If you're at least interested in a little bit of light novels or some of the manga that we mentioned, like Animeta or Discommunication, uh, please check those out. They're available on on ebook stores everywhere. So. Excellent. Thanks very much. And yeah, I think if the people watching are anything like me, they now just have a growing list of things that they're going to have to read as soon as they, they, yeah, they get off this stream. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sam and John, thank you again so much. Um, we'll be back with some more Cloud Planet Story very soon, so uh, don't go away, or we might let you have a quick toilet break. We've got a few minutes. Um, but uh, come back, because we've got lots more panels, lots more cool stuff, and uh, we will be back very soon. So uh, see you shortly. <laughs>